I grew up under religious cult laws. And in this video, I'm going to tell you what they were. I put them all down in a book actually. And as I was writing the book, I got a phone call from a member of the cult who said, don't write those laws in the book. And I said, but why not? Because I was reared up under these rules and these laws and uh, they were right then. So why wouldn't they be right now? Why wouldn't the world want to know all about them? So that there could be some people who think, you know what? I like those laws. I think they, that is the lifestyle I'd like to be under. So I wrote them all down and I'm going to refer to them uh, in this book, Cult Escape, which is also a campaign creating awareness about religious cults uh, and also um, encouraging people to, if they are, feel controlled in a religious cult, to uh, examine and to research for themselves to see if that's really what their life choice is going to be. It's up to them. And so uh, here are a few of the laws which I'll quote from the book. No particular order. The first one was that houses must be separate. There was a time when we could live wherever you wanted. And then when I was happened to be 18, a new law came out. But that was that if your house had shared drains, you had to move house. So we moved. Although a year or two later, another law came out that the adjoining walls of the house must not be so. And so my family had to move again. Um, all contact with anybody who was not in our fellowship was strictly forbidden. So when my grandparents, my four grandparents left when I was four, we were not allowed to have anything whatsoever to do with them. That, that was the end of them. Um, you could not marry, you could not marry anybody unless they were part of the group. This meant there was always a potential shortage of, shortage of appropriate spouses. And uh, I never found anybody that I wanted to marry, which was good really, because when I left, it meant that there was no potential uh, separation and devastation of uh, my wife, for example, being separated from me, as is often the case when people leave. Couples could not hold hands when they were engaged to be married. A lot of these laws that uh, cults have are very, very, very tiny, uh, but they, um, there's a lot of detail uh, in a lot of these laws. Um, we had to attend all the meetings, which was 11 a week until the last few years I was there. I was there for 22 years. The last few years, there was only 10. Uh, every day of our life, five on a Sunday, literally four on a Sunday, uh, rain, hail or shine, um, bank holidays, Christmas Day, New Year's Day, every day was, we had to go to the meeting without fail, unless we were ill. Um, technology, uh, computers and mobile phones, strictly forbidden. Somebody uh, got uh, withdrawn from, kicked out of fellowship for having a mobile phone. And uh, as a result of it, lost his wife and his children. That included television and car radios and any pre-recorded music. Television was called a pipeline of filth and all that technology, all of it, was strictly forbidden. Uh, no worldly entertainment, including any sporting event, going to the cinema or the theatre was allowed. I remember um, once going to the zoo, we were actually allowed to go to the zoo. And uh, the one we used to go to in Southport passed a, a fun fair. And I remember as a kid looking longingly through those gates at the children screaming and shouting and enjoying the fun fair and enjoying the roller coaster and the dodgings, etc. But no fun fairs for us. Having a pet is forbidden. Now, there was a time when you could have a pet, a dog or a cat, etc. And then the law came and that was it. They had to go. I know two people who put their dog down. Um, they had to. These laws, you see, are not negotiable. They're laws that if they are broken, there are consequences. And the worst consequence, the worst of these laws, was the separating of families who did not comply to the laws. Therefore, the members who were who were in, what once someone left, the members were under law that said they could have nothing to do with them. Otherwise, they would lose out, lose their status as well. They would be put out and um, ostracised and shunned, uh, often for the rest of their life. No going on holiday, home or abroad. We had to be home for the meeting. 
No going into a worldly, worldly person's house whatsoever. You couldn't even go next door um, for a cup of tea with your neighbour or a cup of cold water even. You weren't allowed to do that. Jesus was and Paul the Apostle was, but not us. Uh, no eating under the same roof in any building where there was worldly people. No restaurants or pubs, therefore. We couldn't attend school assembly or have religious education. We had to sit outside. No visiting other churches. No taking, no going to university or taking advanced levels. No jury service. No trade unions or jobs where you must sign a secrecy act. And men were forbidden from having long hair, beards and moustaches. And women had to have uh, long skirts, no makeup, no jewellery. And so these were just a few, this is just a sample of some of the rules and some of the laws that we were under growing up. And we never questioned them. Uh, we never questioned them ever because to question them was to uh, was to doubt the leader. And to doubt the leader was uh, an offence which was excommunicatable. And this is the lifestyle that I, I grew up in. And um, I'm going to ask you a question. Are you in a group that has laws over your life? And this is what this campaign is all about. It's just creating awareness. And uh, if people happen to be approached by a group of religious people ever, if you were, then maybe you could ask them, what laws would I have to be under if I was to join you? And so um, if, you, if you enjoy this video, please subscribe. Please get this book if you want to. Uh, read about the whole story of what went on in this uh, 22 the 22 years and it's uh, all about the campaign creating awareness and um, please um, like and comment and let me know what you think and I'll see you soon goodbye for now